Well, good morning, and thank you for joining with me once again. And um, we're going to continue on where we were yesterday. If you didn't catch yesterday's introduction to this new week, I, you can go back and, and view it and then catch up with us if you like. Um, but one of the things that we were talking about is Paul's injunction that we should avoid people who fit into that description of what people would be like in the end times in, in chapters, or excuse me, verses two through four at the beginning of chapter three in Second Timothy. And uh, this is always really a challenge. Uh, but before I begin to get into that, something I did want to mention that I forgot to mention yesterday, I, I don't know if you noticed, I have a new coffee cup. And this was a cup actually uh, Mike Martinez, one of our friends at the church, has been with us since I think he got off the off the ark with Noah and us at that time. But he uh, he is a potter and he makes a lot of pottery. We have a lot of his works around the church, beautiful stuff. And he made my wife and I these incredible coffee mugs. And the thing I like about mine is that mine is super big and I can get a lot of coffee in here. So usually my usual portion of coffee is is what uh, my coffee maker would say is two cups of coffee. And this is clearly a four cupper, where, which is um, really sweet. And my, my wife even made the comment. She said, you know, the coffee tastes much better in these cups. So Mike, thank you for this wonderful gift. And for the rest of you, Sorry you don't have one. Anyway, but uh, continuing on, getting back to Paul's injunction to avoid or to turn away from and not to become entangled or associated with people who are of this type, is it becomes really hard to answer the question or to know how to do that when they are part of your family. What do you do when they are part of that internetwork of people in your lives? Uh, you know, as someone once said, you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. And that's kind of stated as kind of a pejorative, a very negative thing that somehow we're trapped with these people. There's something valuable about being trapped in relationship with people who are different with, from you or who may even be somewhat annoying or difficult to be around. And that's simply that it teaches us how to love people who are not easy to love. And that's kind of a, a valuable skill that the more you invest in that, the more God helps you with it and uh, the more effectually you can live your life. At the same time, there are some relationships that we've talked about over the past couple of weeks that are so toxic that there needs to really be very clear boundaries between you and that person. And if that person repeatedly violates those boundaries, then the only solution may be to simply move on. I think of the situation a lot of parents and find themselves in where they have a child who has transitioned and or become uh, a, a lesbian or gay or something like that. And uh, they, they've often asked me, what do I do with that? And I said, well, as long as they're not claiming to be followers of Jesus or be Christians, it's really not a problem. Paul says that um, basically the problem comes is when they go around advertising that they're a follower of Jesus and they're walking disorderly. Then he says, you can't have anything to do with them. You really have to make a statement that they are not Christians and they don't represent Christ. And the reason for doing that is not just simply to protect the church, it's, it's really to uh, really establish the truth in their life. And because uh, unless somebody comes right out and says it's wrong, then they're going to feel justified and rationalized. In fact, I was reading just the testimony of a, uh, a young girl who transitioned and, and, and became a boy, basically. She was encouraged all the way to the pot. She said, nobody ever stopped and said, are you sure this is what you want to do or this may not be right? She said, everybody encouraged me to do it. In fact, even pushed her to do it. And she said, here she is. Now she's had her, her breasts removed and, and uh, basically her body has been, she, had her, she didn't have her uterus removed and she's, um, she's uh, been filled with hormones and so forth, and now she realizes in her early 20s, I'm a girl, I've always been a girl, and uh, you can't change people's DNA. You are what you are. And yet, the thing that struck me, she said, nobody said to me, you shouldn't do this. And so, Sometimes when people are, you know, really advertising themselves as Christians, we need to say, you're violating the Word of God. I don't know what kind of Christian you see yourself as, but you're not a biblically based Christian. But secondly, it also becomes important for them to have somebody in their life who's simply saying, I believe that what you're doing is wrong. I believe you're, what you're doing is a mistake. Because what sin is, is always a mistake in the sense that you'll realize one day that you're terribly mistaken in whatever you've chosen to believe. It's contrary to the Word of God, and it's going to have some very negative consequences. And so 
you know, speaking the truth in love means just that, that you speak um, and that you tell people the truth, oftentimes the truth that they don't want to hear. And you're motivated by a heart of love. You you want them to have the best that they can have, be everything that God wants them to be, and not become anything that Satan wants them to be, because in the end, he just simply wants to destroy them. And that's the terrifying reality. I know sometimes you hear testimonies I've heard over the years of people who have died and, and gone to hell, and they come back in with a level of terror that's kind of hard to, uh, to quantify, but every single one of them has ended up giving their life to Christ and becoming a Christ follower because they've seen the reality. And I pray that uh, those people in our life who have made these uh, godless, ungodly choices in their life will come to that moment and recognize that. And that's something that, you know, you can only say so much, quite honestly. Uh, at some point, it becomes nagging and harassing. So, but you speak the truth to people, you do it in love, and then you see what happens. And if they continue to persist, then then all you can do is pray that God would open their eyes. But how do we interact with them from that point on? Well, uh, one of the things that Paul said in Romans 12, 18, he says, if it is possible, as far as depends on you, live at peace with everyone. And so what does it mean if it's possible? Well, there are some people who, and I've found this with many parents who have their kids who uh, go into uh, one of the LGBTQ AI plus lifestyles who have, when they've said to their children, I think this is wrong and I think you're making a terrible mistake, that the reaction has been anger and rejection. If you can't accept me the way I am, then you can't be in my life. And so you you have no control over that. You, you can't simply say, well, I'm going to accept this because I want to have that relationship. I don't accept it. I, I don't see it as right. I love you, but I just think you're making a bad choice. Uh, if that's untenable to them, then and they throw you out of their life, well, you can't you can't depend, you can't fix that. You're just gonna have to wait for God to do the work in their life where they come back and re realize that you were the one person in their life who told them the truth. Um, again, if they are proponents of these kind of ideas, he says in Titus 3.10 that you warn a divisive person once and then you warn him a second time and after that have nothing to do with him. And then he goes on, you may be sure that such a man is warped and sinful and is self-condemned. Now, important, the phrase warped there, the word warped and sinful is uh, an interesting thing because once something becomes warped, it is very difficult to straighten it out. It's very difficult to, to set it right. And uh, he says, you have to understand that this isn't something they've just fallen into, but this has become a twisted pattern of living and thinking. I mean, I've seen a couple of, uh, you know, uh, videos of people who, uh, the one lady who's, who's suing her parents because she didn't give them permission to conceive her. And you sit there and go, how in the world do you get that permission? I'm sure that suit will never come to court. But she was very serious about this whole thing, about how terrible it is. Or the lady who uh, was um, arguing about the fact that her son now identifies as a cat and she was angry at the veterinarian because he wouldn't, treat, he wouldn't treat her son because he's not licensed to treat people and decide the fact that he wants to be a cat and she agrees with it, that he's a cat, that makes no difference. And her argument, of course, was just really brilliant. She said, I think that you should treat people uh, medically in whatever way that they prefer to be treated. Well, that makes no sense at all. It just is completely nonsense. And, but that's when you realize that people's thinking becomes so terribly twisted and turned around that, that they no longer follow any kind of logical sense. But the guiding star that they're following is actually a falling star that's ultimately going to crash and burn and them along with it. So one of the things he says, there does come a point where you just simply say, you know, I just can't talk with you anymore. In fact, I had that encounter just on Sunday morning where I had a, a gentleman who I hadn't seen for five or six years and uh, suddenly he shows up and uh, wants to change my theology to align with his theology. And his theology was well, all I could say to him is I said, you don't really understand what you're even talking about. You're, you want to be an authority on something that you, you're completely uninformed and you're pretty ignorant about. Uh, but he kept on arguing, following around, interrupting me with other people. And so, you know, we usually have to call security and security helps them find their way out to the parking lot and, and uh, usually watches them until they disappear. And then ultimately, if they come back, we have to start trespassing them. 
And some people say, well, that's not loving. You should, you should spend time with them. Well, let me tell you my experience. I have had situations like that where I've spent hours going through with people because I thought as a pastor, it's my obligation. But you learn really quickly, unfortunately, in my case, not so quickly, that some of these people are unteachable. They don't want to hear what you have to say. And so it's important that we begin to recognize this argument is just going to de devolve into uh, just uh, petty arguments, the futility that Paul talked about earlier. And you just need to say, you know, well, I'm no longer interested in having this conversation. Um, I'm just going to leave it in the Lord's hands and, and move on. And that will save you a lot of grief. It doesn't mean that your heart isn't broken over what's going on or you don't feel bad for that person. Because in this gentleman's case, I feel terrible for him. He is really confused and mixed up, and I don't know if he even has some kind of, you know, psychological and neurological disorder. I think it's likely, but the whole point is that spending hours talking to him and, and trying to reason with him isn't going to happen because he's he's warped. There's something broken inside that has twisted his mind, and uh, it's for God to sort that out. Yeah, but you and I have better work to do, and I just simply said to him, look, I have all these other people that want to talk to me who have issues that I can help them with, and you're just taking up my time. And so, uh, you know, end of conversation. So I was able to redirect myself to people who really had serious issues that could be addressed because they were willing to hear what Scripture says. Well, enough of that. We'll move on. Tomorrow we'll pick up on our next verse. Blessings.